Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to add joystick input to our engine. So let's go ahead and add a file for that under our input folders for header and CPP. And that's going to be very similar to our keyboard and mouse input, right? So we'll have our namespace, class joystick. And this time we want to look at um, STL game controller axis and STL game controller button. So if we just go to that, you can see that they've got the same sort of enum style thing. And for axes, they have left X, left Y, right X, right Y, left trigger and right trigger. So the left and right triggers are their own axes in STL. So we can expose that. And then similarly for the buttons, you can see that they've got all the buttons you'd expect. So A, B, X, Y, back, guide, start left stick, so this is pushing in on the stick, shoulders, D-pads, and some additional ones that we, we can or don't have to support, it's sort of up to us. These are some of the special controllers that have additional buttons. Most of the time you really just want to do stuff with these because you know that most controllers will have all of these. Additionally, I know for mouse, for example, we did the, the sort of unnamed enum and sort of did it that this way so that we don't have to type hippo input. You do something like hippo input mouse and then call the button method and pass in hippo input let's call it mouse enum uh you know left button right like it's very verbose um i think really if the caller doesn't want that they can always say using namespace hippo input and this just becomes mouse button mouse enum left um so it's not bad i don't mind either way so i think maybe for joystick we'll do it as an actual enum that lives in the class and then We'll just sort of see which one we like better, and we can always update the other one to match. So to start, we'll just create these enum classes. So enum class um, axis, and again, uh, I think for mouse, I said something similar. There we go, and if we just take these, and paste them here. And these can just be, I don't want to even support invalid. I know it's going to start on uh, zero, at zero here. And so I'll just say, um, I want to be a little more verbose here. So like left stick um, horizontal. And then left stick vertical. Um, right stick horizontal. Right stick vertical. And then uh, just say left trigger right trigger and count. So the good thing about enum classes is that these are scoped so they're not in the global namespace so you can actually just type count without having to prefix it with something like you used to do with C style arrays or C style enums. And then same here we'll use adapter for button and we'll say uh, this will be called enum class button. And so for the button we have to do the same. I'm just going to go up to the D-pad. I'm not interested in the other ones. And so these will be a little easier. We'll just remove these. A, B, X, Y, back, guide, start. Um, for left stick, I think I'll just call it LS. Right stick, RS left shoulder, I usually refer to them as bumpers, so I'll say LB, right shoulder, RB, and notice that the order has to be the same, right? Same as the keyboard and mouse, it has, eventually it's going to map to the SDL uh, value, so we want to make sure that they stay the same. And then D-pad, okay, I'll do this, D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, and D-pad right. Okay, so let's see how this works for us. Now, in terms of the methods we're exposing, we usually have an initialized method to sort of set everything up for us. That's sort of not really a concept here because we don't have a control, we don't have a, the context of a controller having always been plugged in, right? Um, for example, you can assume a person will have a keyboard and a mouse plugged in, and if you don't, the SDL just won't give you any events for that. But the way their new SDL game controller API works is it's all event driven. So I'm not going to assume any number of controllers. I'm instead going to listen for events from SDL to tell me if a controller has been plugged in. So that means we don't have an initialized method. It also means we don't have a single sort of uh, 
piece of data for the button axes, we, we have potentially multiple. So in order to hold all that data together, I'm just going to create a struct down here. It's private, so only this class cares about it. We'll call it controller. And the way SDL's API works is you open a controller, and it gives you a pointer to it. And then when you want to close the controller, you send that pointer back to it. So that pointer is called SDL underscore game controller pointer. Now let's call it game controller GC, and it shows it's an old pointer. Now this, to use this, I don't have to include this, right? And again, the point is I don't want to include this in my header files. So instead, I'll just take this type def, and I'll just uh, forward declare it up here. Okay, so that should be good. And now I can start having my sort of arrays of data. Let's just semicolon at the end there. Um, so I'm going to have an array. And I'm going to have four arrays. So std array. So a bool, an array of bools, and the size will be, um, because these are enum classes, they are const expert. So I can just say um, int and then button colon colon count. And that should work. Um, and this will be my buttons array. And then I'll do the same for last buttons, just like the keyboard. And then I have to do the same for axes, right? So axes and last axes. And axes are uh, floats. So I want to store axes from negative one to one. Right? So negative one being, let's say, on the left horizontal, negative one will be full left, and one will be full to the right. Um, and this just makes it easier to sort of conceptualize around where the left stick and right stick sort of axes are. Uh, SDL goes up to a, a different value, so we're going to have to map to it, but ultimately I want floats between negative one and one. And this time we're using the axes, or axis count value here. So that's our controller struct, and now we need to have a way to uh, have multiple of these, and it's going to be unknown to us how many of the users are going to be able to sort of, you know, turn on and off sort of during gameplay. So we're going to want to include uh, an unorder unordered map. We're going to use this to store sort of a mapping from our engine indices into a controller structure. Um, and the reason we do this is because what, with SDL, if, if during the lifetime of, a, of an app, I plug in a controller and then unplug it and plug it back in, um, the SDL ID that I get back is going to be incremented. So if I say, you know, player zero or, you know, player one always has joystick zero and they unplug it and plug it back in, they're no longer going to have joystick zero, they're going to have joystick one. So we're going to support a mapping on our side. And to do that, we're going to store this stuff in a static std unordered map of ints to std unique pointers of controllers. And we'll call these um, available joysticks. Maybe. Unique pointer needs memory. So in terms of our API, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have an initialize method because SDL will send us events when controllers are connected and disconnected, um, and that's what's going to set this up. So instead, we need to handle those events. And SDL will send these with something called an SDL controller device event, and it's a struct. So I'm just going to forward declare that here because we're going to handle taking these in. So our two methods would be uh, static void on joystick connected and it takes in this a reference to this event and on joystick disconnected I will also need a shutdown method so static void shutdown just in case we shut down without disconnecting controller right we we'll have to clean ourselves up and then a static void update similar to how we do our keyboard and mouse and now we can add our getters right so static bool uh, button right and now I'm realizing I'm I now I'm realizing on in mouse we just called it button instead of get button and get mouse button down and get button up. That's not really going to work here because I don't know what else to call this enum class. It's going to be a button and an axis. So maybe for this purpose again I'll just call it get button and uh, we can see which one we like best and update mouse and keyboard to match this or update this to match mouse and keyboard. I think this is this is going to be cleaner. So we'll say get button and we need to ask which joystick do we care about, right? So we'll pass it in as an integer. Just say joystick ID and then the button that we're asking for. So we're doing that three times button, button down, and button up. And then we also want a float uh, get axis. Now 
Now I mentioned earlier that SDL's IDs will always roll up, whereas ours we want to stay static. So uh, the first controller you plug in is going to be ID zero. Even if you unplug it and plug it back in, that one should still be ID zero. So in order to support that, we need to know what sort of the next free ID is in our map. And the way we're going to do that is with uh, just a method to say uh, int get next free index maybe. Yeah, that works. And this will be static. And this is going to go sort of iterate through our map and just see which one, you know, which index is available and has nothing on the right side. And that's what we'll return. And this is only going to be used for when we connect a joystick so we know where to store it in our map. So I think this is enough to get started. So why don't we switch over to CPP? We'll include tempo input joystick. And I'll just go back and uh, have hip visual assist help me create all these methods. Except for this guy who I'll usually, I usually put these up top. So here's the unordered map of ints to unique pointers to joysticks. Uh, I don't need this, just joystick controller and it's joystick available joysticks, perfect. So in order to hook these events up, we go to our window.cpp where we handle all the STL events and we just handle these new ones, right? So I'll have to include uh, joystick. And then here we'll just handle different cases. So I think the case is uh, STL controller device added, yep. Yeah. And then we'll just call um, input joystick on joystick connected. And we can pass in, uh, when you have this event, it, the data in terms of the ID of the of the joystick is stored in e.c device type, or just c device. So we'll do that for added and the same for, uh, I think it's removed. Rematch, removed, yeah. So we'll say on joystick disconnected, pass in that e.device again. And then we can update it here as usual. Joystick update. Okay. So now that we have the e.c device getting passed in, we can go back here and actually do something with it. So in order to know what this is, we have to include STL events. And we also have, um, we'll eventually need game controller. This is just like including STL mouse and STL keyboard. But now that we have STL events, we know what this is, and the device index is with an e.which. So you can see timestamp, type, and which. And which is this just an, an int that it gives us the ID. So we can just uh, cache that. And then according to the docs, we want to make sure that it is a game controller and not some other device that might be picked up by the event system. So we can do that with a call to SDL is game controller, and we pass in that joystick index, so device index. And if it is a game controller, then we can do stuff with it. So the first thing we're going to do is make a controller, and this is our controller structure now. And then I can just set that game controller pointer to SDL game controller open. And again, we pass in that index, so device index. So this is that call I was talking about. This will return a pointer to the controller that we're, the SDL has initialized for us. And on the shutdown, we need to sort of clear that by closing the controller. So now we can see if that succeeded. If it failed, it will return a null pointer. So if C dash arrow GC, now we know we're good to go. So, so we're actually, because we need to be able to pass in the same device index into the disconnected method, we, we are gonna need to cache it. So we should add something here, just int uh, joystick index sorry code negative one to start and our joystick index is just going to let us uh, cache that so if we, we have a valid game controller we can say c dash arrow joystick index equals device index and then at this point we can also since we made something unique we can actually this is this becomes our initialized method so if we look at our mouse.cpp real quick where we filled it with false that's what we're going to want to do here. And again, we'll need uh, algorithms for that. So we can fill um, C dash arrow joystick in uh, C dash arrow buttons dot begin C dash arrow buttons dot end with false. Last buttons.
and for the axes, I'll just put a 0 0.f in there. Okay, so now that our controller structure is all filled in, we need to store it into our map. In order to do that, we can call that uh, get next free index method, and that'll tell us where in the map to put it. So let's we'll assume I wrote it for now, and we'll say map index equals get next free index. And then maybe we'll just log here. Duplo trace, joystick connected, um, map index, and device index. I'll pass in map index and device index. Okay, and now I actually have, have to actually have to move it. So now that I have a map index, I just say available joysticks at map index equals to move C. And now I've successfully moved my unique pointer to this controller into my unordered map. Now if this did return null pointer, we do want to print an error here. So hippo error error opening game controller with device index. ID and then we'll print out the STL error here. So we'll have device index and then STL get error. So maybe we'll look at that get next free index method. So get next free index is pretty straightforward. So here's our return value, ret. And then basically we're just gonna go over all of the the number of controllers that we've got connected right now, right? So for int i equals zero, i is less than STL num joysticks tells you that. So it tells you how many controllers are currently connected. I++, plus plus. and then we're just going to iterate over our map at those indices and see if one of them is free. So if available joysticks.count, you can do this with .count, this is basically different, a, a way to check if a key exists. If .count of i equals equals zero, so there are, there are no entries into our map with this index as the key, then we can just say ret equals i, we found a space, and then break. So that way, if I've connected two devices, one is index zero, one is index one, and I, am, I unplug one but not the other, I don't want the, the one that I didn't unplug to shuffle and, and around anywhere, right? I want it to stay as is, and then sort of replugging in the original device, we'll put that one back in where it was at sort of spot zero. So that's pretty straightforward, that's all that does, and that should put it into our map properly. So now when it's disconnected, uh, we just do something similar. So again, we have that E, right? So let's get that device index equals E dot which. And then we'll just iterate over our map. So we wanna do this with an iterator because we wanna be able to remove something from our map once we've found the device that we wanna remove. So we'll use an, an iterator. So auto IT equals available joysticks.begin. IT does not equal available joysticks.end. IT plus plus. And then we'll just sort of pull out the controller. So a controller star equals it dash arrow second dot get. So iterator dash arrow second gives you the controller star, the unique pointer, and then dot get gives you the raw pointer behind that unique pointer. And yeah, I'm gonna call it something, so we'll call it C. And the reason I do this is so I don't have to move it out at all. I'm just going to take a pointer to the data, the underlying data, just so I can check some values against it, right? And really we're just checking that joystick index that we cached above. So if C dash arrow joystick index equals equals device index. So at this point we found the index into our map that pertains to the device. And so we'll log here as well. Hippo trace joystick disconnected. And maybe I'll just give it the device index. Okay, and now that we know which controller we want to turn off, we can call SDL game controller close. And we pass in that pointer to the game controller that we got from the open call. So that's C-OGC. And now we're free to just remove this thing from existence in terms of our map, right? So available joysticks dot erase, pass in the iterator, and then we'll break. So once you erase something, you're shuffling this stuff around and IT, actually this returns, this should return an, uh, an iterator to the next thing when you call erase. Either way, once we found the single what we'll get an event per device. So once we found the device, we don't need to iterate over this anymore. So we can break. So that's pretty much it. And our uh, shutdown is gonna look very similar, except we just don't check on that. We're just gonna shut everything down. So iterate over everything, get the controller, no need for an if statement, no need for a trace. Just close it. And then IT equals available joystick.erase IT. And so that way IT keeps sort of move, get moving up and 
I actually don't even want this IT++ in that case because this will get set to the next thing. So if I do IT++, I'll skip stuff. So start at the beginning, go to the end, don't do anything. We will update IT in this line before the next iteration of the loop. And now for the update. So the update, again, is very straightforward uh, just in terms of how we've done this in the past. So I'll just again iterate over everything, pull out the controller, and then maybe I'll just make sure that we have valid stuff here. So like if C, um, uh, and C dash arrow GC. So I wanna make sure that this controller thing is valid and the game controller sitting behind it is valid. And maybe I'll assert on this as well. Invalid game controller in available joysticks map. Okay, so now we'll do that copy again, just like we did with the keyboard and mouse. So C dash arrow last buttons equals buttons. C dash arrow last axes equals axes. Oops, equals C dash arrow buttons equals C dash arrow axes. And now we can ask for the, the most up-to-date data from SDL. So we'll have to do this for every button, right? So for, um, we'll do an unsigned integer. And since I'm, uh, let's see, unsigned integer i equals zero. i is less than uh, button, button count. Oh, sorry, button count. And uh, for this, I think I have to do a static cast to an int here. And then i plus plus. For it starts at zero, less than the count i plus plus. And we know these enums map exactly one to one to the SDL ones. So I can just say c dash arrow buttons at i equals SDL game controller get button. And then we'll pass in that game controller that we care about, so c dash arrow gc, and then the button we're after. And in this case, I'll just do a static cast the other way. So a static cast to the SDL enum, SDL game controller button. And I'll pass in i. So we're iterating over our buttons at enum, and then we're just statically casting it to theirs before we pass it in. And that's basically it, the same thing for the axes now. So instead of button, it's axis, axis count and it's axes, and this time it's get axis. And again, GC, and then static cast, SDL controller, game controller axis. And now we've got the most up-to-date data. So it's pretty straightforward. So now for the getters, these are also gonna be pretty straightforward because we're passing in the joystick ID, and these will be indices into our array so that when I ask for ID zero, I'm always getting the first joystick, not you know, regardless of what, SD, what ID SDL has given it. So pretty straightforward, auto IT uh, equals available joysticks dot find joystick ID, right? So try and get the joystick ID, and that's sort of the entry into our, our unordered map. And if it's not equal to available joysticks dot end. So we found the entry, we can just return um, IT dash arrow second dash arrow buttons at static cast int button. Right, so it is the iterator, dash arrow second gives us that controller structure, the unique pointer to it. So dash arrow buttons gives us the buttons map or the buttons array within the controller structure. And then we index into it by this button that's passed in. Cool, and then else, um, actually I guess we don't need an else we're returning. So in this case, we'll just say uh, hippo error joystick with id blah is not available and passing that joystick id whoops and then we'll return false anyways okay the error might be overkill but i think it's important at least for now we'll see and so again you guessed it same thing with down and up and the same way we did it last time so in this case this is going to just get a little verbose but that's okay so down means, is it down now and not last buttons? And then similarly here, it's if it's not down anymore, but it was down before. So again, pretty straightforward. Got the joystick, if we have it, just return axes at static cast int axis. 
Otherwise, the joystick's not available, I'll return 0 0.10. So that should be all we need in order to just start getting some data out. So let's go to the engine.cpp and let's just start printing some stuff out. So joystick. Uh, we already have the event set up, so we should be able to just start sort of printing stuff in our loop here. So let's do a hippo trace. Uh, joystick. Um, let's just print out the left stick axis and maybe the button. Uh, just four buttons. So um, A, B, X, and Y. So we got an axis and four buttons. And uh, so I'll pass in a joystick. Or actually, input joystick get button, or get axis actually, so this will be joystick index 0, and the axis I'm asking for is, let's say, left stick horizontal, right, left stick x axis. So that's our axis, and then for get button, we'll again ask for joystick ID 0's button, and it'll be input joystick button A, B, X, Y. Okay, that should be enough. So let's go ahead and start. And what I'm going to do now is I have no controllers plugged in right now. So let's just run it. And what we should see is the whole bunch of joystick zero is not available. In fact, we should get five of those per frame. So that's why I was thinking it might be a little overkill. Um, yeah, so five. So you see there's five. And then we're having our default values back. So left stick x axis and then false, 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 false. So I'm going to turn mine on now. And you can see we're starting to get some data. So x axis, like I said, SDL does not go from negative one to one. They go from negative 32,768 to positive 32,767. Um, so that's me holding it all the way to the left and me holding it all the way to the right. Similarly for the buttons, A, B, X, and Y. Okay, uh, now you can see I'm, I'm barely touching it and you can see there's a lot of movement on the X axis. That's why we have something like a dead zone. So we should implement that. We should also map it to a value between negative one and one and that should be enough. And then maybe we can just hook it up to these colors so we can do something with them. So I'm going to turn it off, and if we just go back to joystick for a second, if we look at um, get controller button or get axis, I think it tells us right here. So from negative 32,768 to 32,767, except for the triggers which range from 0 to 32,767. So we can even just do that at this point. So get axis divided by 32,767.f. So I'll just put a little comment here so that we know why we're dividing by this magic number. Uh, I could also pull it out into a define or something, but I think for now this is fine. Let's just see what that tells us. So I'm turning my controller on now before the app has started, and you can see it does still get that event. And now I've got a zero, and I'm going from negative one to one. You can see I do go a little further than just negative one, so we'll have to cap that. And that's just because of that one, like if I divide it by 32,768, now I'll reach full negative one on the left side, but I can't. I will never fully reach it on the right side, right? So now I should be able to see the enter. I should be able to see at full negative one, but 0.9999, right? So um, that's fine. I think we can just. I think we'll do seven, and then we'll just cap it to negative one or one. Um, so to clamp it, since we're already including algorithm, we can access the clamp. The clamp. Yep. And then I just pass in the value I'm um, looking to clamp, and then the min and max. So min will be negative 1.f, and max will be 1.f. So now I should have my controller's already on. So as I run it on, as I turn the app on, you'll see I still get that event, and I should be able to go from negative 1 to 1. There you go. So now we have a full range of motion there. And that'll happen for all axes. We're obviously not really looking at other axes yet, so that's okay. So that was the one thing we wanted to fix. The other was the, the dead zone, right? So now the axis has a negative one to one value before we even put it in there. Um, we can just implement a very easy, sort of to, easy to reason by dead zone. So if we just come back here, static float dead zone equals, let's say 0.1f to start.
Actually, I think I have to say 0.1f here. Yep. Yeah. So that's a dead zone, and then for when we ask for the axes, um, we could have like a get axis raw that will bypass the dead zone, or we could pass in like, you know, should use dead zone or not. Um, but basically we'll just say, give me zero if we're within the dead zone and give me the real value if we're not, right? And an easy way to do that is just to check the absolute value of the axis itself. So if we just say float val equals this, so now we can say if the absolute value of our value is greater than dead zone, then we can return um, value itself, otherwise 0.f. And this is just a very easy sort of way to just knock out that code entirely and just return a zero. And so what we should see is now it should stay zero for like most of it. And you can see it is only starting to print something different when it hits a 0.1 something. Um, so if I just increase that a little bit more, let's make it 0.2. That was me just wiggling my thumb without really pushing on the joystick. Um, with 0.2 dead zone, it should be pretty clear. So it's it's always zero. I'm wiggling my, my joystick right now a lot. And now you can see I sort of pushed it enough there to go past it. And the value I'm getting is, is the real value at that point. It's not like the negative one to one mapping sort of somehow uh, gets remapped because of the dead zone. It's just you get zeros or you'll get the real value if you're outside that dead zone. Cool, so that all seems to be working. Um, so I think the last thing we'll do is just map it to some colors. So we can get rid of this, and I think, actually I might want just one more method to see if a, if a joystick is available, um, just given that index, right? Because I don't want to have all those prints. Um, I want the caller can actually verify like static pool, um, is joystick available? Pass in a joystick ID. And then to implement that, we'll, we're gonna do the same thing as this or something very similar. We're just gonna say um, if, uh, or actually we can just say return available joysticks.count at joystick ID is greater than zero. So if there is anything in for this index, uh, then we're good. We can return yes, and you will be able to get data out of it. So now I can just sort of wrap this in an if uh, input joystick is joystick available, we'll pass in zero. Then we can say um, basically this, but with joystick methods instead. So if input joystick get button, yep, just get button, and then we'll just pass in um, input joystick button. Um, let's say left, d-pad, right, d-pad, up, and d-pad, down. And right, we're gonna pass in the joystick ID, so zero. There we go. So now I should be able to use the d-pad to move things around just like I did with the keyboard. Um, now I wanna do something with the axis, so maybe I think we had like the full color, but we were, we were only using X and Y, right? So we don't have anything for blue. So maybe I'll have a uniform uh, float blue equals 0. Point, I guess let's do 0. 0.5F. We'll put it right in the middle. And then here, vec4 will actually, this is actually something that you can do. You can say, oh, you're passing in VPOS here, right? With the offset. Okay, that's fine. So VPOS will be dot XY and then I'll, I'll use blue for the blue and then 1.0 for the alpha. So red, green is X, Y, and then blue 0 0.5. So just this, I should see something with that's a little more blue than what we've seen before. And I should be able to use the D-pad to move it, move it around just like I do with the arrow keys. So now I'm using the D-pad and you can see it is moving around. There's more blue there coming in from the bottom. So that's pretty sweet. Um, now maybe I'll just like bump up the blue or bump down the blue based on a trigger. Um, so let's say if, actually we'll just say float blue equals 0.5f, and then, actually I'm interested in what our triggers would print, so hippo trace, um, lt, rt, uh, let's do a slash t here, and then we'll just pass in input joystick get axis for zero, and then joystick axis left trigger.
and then joystick axis, right trigger. Oh. Let's just see what this has, because it, it should be 0 to 1, and it should never go into negative 1. And I think that makes sense, that's what the mapping should give us, but I just want to confirm. So left trigger, I'm pushing it a little bit now, and uh, you can see it's going up to almost 1. Okay, so left trigger doesn't quite make it to 1. And right trigger here, um, yep, again, doesn't quite make it to 1, but it's pretty close. I'm not too concerned about that. So that's good. We can use these values now to pass it in. So I'll just say, um, maybe we'll just say blue equals left trigger, right? We don't have to use both triggers. And then we'll just set the uniform float for blue to be blue. And it's float, single float. So now I should have back to what I had before where it's no blue if I'm not touching the trigger. And as I push it, I should see more and more blue. So here we go, and there it is. As I'm pushing it, more and more blue coming through there. So if I push it and release really fast, you can see it, you, can, you can't even see that, uh, that sort of ramping up of the blueness, but if I push it slowly, you can see that it does actually ramp up pretty nicely. Okay, so we got joysticks working. That's all I wanted to do today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.